Well, good morning, everyone. I'm here on Indiana Wesleyan's Marion campus this morning, and I was reading through your discussion posts about ways of knowing, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to show you a little bit of campus and also to talk to you about ways of knowing. So if you look over my shoulder back here where you see those columns, that's our science and nursing building. It's a huge, big, beautiful new building. And when I look at that building, I think about the fact that all the folks who study and work there really come to know the world through science. They believe and they resonate with a scientific way of knowing. So think about for a minute, how do you know what you know what is it that helps you to know something? Do you know something because you can study it and because you know the logic of it? You can look at it under a microscope. You can determine whether it's true or false. There are scientific facts that tell you whether or not something is accurate. That's a scientific way of knowing and some of us are more comfortable with that. If I look uh, back behind me in this direction, you're gonna see another brick building. So this is the art building, it used to be the Beard Art Center. Um, we have some really famous painters and artists who have done their work in that building. And so when I think about artistic ways of knowing, that makes me think about the fact that for some people, what is known is what they can create and appreciate through beauty and art. Um, and that's how they know what they know. That's how they know something. I know the world to be true and right and good. Um, because I can appreciate it and see it and experience it. And so what resonates with artists, many artists, is an artistic way of knowing the world. I know it because I see it, I can create it. Um, it, it causes a feeling, it causes a reaction, an emotion. Um, and that realization, that reality, that experiencing is what causes them to know. So I'm gonna talk about one more way of knowing, which is right directly behind me. And this is the Williams Prayer Chapel. It's one of our favorite buildings on campus and I'll take you inside. But um, a, another way of knowing that is really specific to us at a Christian institution is revealed ways of knowing. And so we believe that um, God reveals things to us at certain times in our lives through scripture, through the Bible, through prayer, through being in community with other believers. It happens to be Sunday morning right now, so I'm about to go to worship. But the Williams Prayer Chapel exists so that people can know God by being in his presence, by being with him, listening to him, reading the word. And you all hopefully in your own communities have these places of quietness, of prayer, where you can stop, take a moment, pull away from the world and uh, listen to God. Just read his word and, and try to understand what is it that he would have for you. What does he want you to hear from him? Um, what, where is he trying to direct your steps? The Holy Spirit is at work and present in our lives. And so we designate these spaces for revealed ways of knowing. So I'm going to take a step inside so you can see um, how beautiful. We have an Old Testament professor here on campus. His wife is a professor of fine arts. She does stained glass and they designed and created this chapel several, several years ago. So you can see this provides a whole different experience for a way of knowing who God is. We don't know God through science when we're in here. We don't know him because of historical facts or archeological digs, although Dr. Williams, who helped design this chapel, he is an archeologist and has done many archeological digs. When we're here, we know God because of his presence. So up here at the front of the chapel, we have this amazing statue of garden, or Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Before he was taken to the cross. And this provides an incredible place of solitude.